Welcome everyone! In this video, we are going to be diving into my top 5 best teams for the Great League. Now, we are just about a week into Season 12 of Pokemon Go Battle League. That's enough time to let the dust settle, let the meta settle in a little bit, have some fun with some spice. And as we approach week two, and as the meta settles in and uh, and uh, things get a little, bo little bit more stable, that often signifies a time to get a little bit more serious, you know, try and put some things together, get behind a solid team to really achieve your goals whatever they may be for season 12 of Go Battle League. So in this video, we're going to have a look at five very, very solid teams to get you off on the right foot for season 12 of Go Battle League. So without further ado, let's dive into team number one. All right, guys, here we go. Team number one. And my goodness, is it a powerful team for the Great League? And it leads with Reggie Steele on the lead, Sableye on the safe swap, and Altaria in the back to close the game strong. Now, for those of you that watched my most recent video, which featured Altaria in the back, you will know how powerful of a closer Altaria can be. Reggie steals a very solid lead. It's going to protect our back two Pokemon from the Charmers, of course. And you round that out with the best safe swap in the Great League and good old Sableye. That's a recipe for an amazing team. So let's have a look at the scorecard here. And there you have it, my friends. I wasn't kidding when I said that this team was a very powerful team that will surely help you uh, get off to the get off to a good start in season 12. Guys, look at this scorecard. You get an A for coverage, A for bulk, you do get a B for safety, and an A for consistency. You don't get much better than that. Uh, so let's have a look at these matchups here for team number one. So Reggie Steele on the lead is going to be quite powerful. Of course, uh, the counter users will give it some trouble, which is why we've got these two Pokemon in the back. Um, but a couple of matchups that I really wanted to uh, delve into a little bit are going to be if you're met with a Stunfisk lead or a Swampert lead. Uh, those are going to be very tricky for Reggie Steele on the lead. So, Stunfisk, the way I like to play that lead is I like to get off a Focus Blast. Of course, Stunfisk with Altaria in the back can be trouble if it somehow finds its way to it. So, you want to get in some big damage with a Focus Blast. Nine times out of ten, they will let that Focus Blast go. And if they do, they have fallen into your trap because they've taken big damage. They generally tank that because they know that you cannot farm down. And uh, that is a trap, my friends. And that is how you play that. Uh, you get off that big damage, or you could even grab a shield advantage, but it's not gonna be much of a shield advantage because you will have to shield up the EQ. You cannot tank that big damage and uh, let Stunfisk uh, get off scot-free. So. Uh, you really want to get that Focus Blast off and then pivot into Sableye and play from there. Getting off a big Focus Blast on Stunfisk will essentially put it within farm down range for Altaria. So that's why it is key. And the same goes similarly for Swampert. Um, generally, they will shield that. Unlike Stunfisk, Swampert does not quite have the same uh, bulk. So... <laughs> uh, they will generally shield up the Focus Blast. You do outpace um to the earthquake and in that case uh you can take the shield advantage and pivot into sableye so that's how i would play those two very tricky leads with reggie steel on the lead uh nitto queen's also going to be a bit of a problem on the lead uh maybe even more so than swampert and stunfisk as it is resisting both of your charge moves um but still you you do still outpace it to the earth power and it's generally a Shadow Nidoqueen that you will often encounter on the lead. Um, and uh, Focus Blast, although resisted, still does a, does a respectable amount of damage. You just can't have a very healthy Nidoqueen 
uh, Roman free, you know, without without uh, getting off that damage because a healthy Nido Queen is quite lethal because it can just get on a roll with that poison jab, poison fang combo. So getting the chip damage uh, is definitely helpful, and uh, you could definitely tank and eat an Earth Power. Um, and I would advise doing so because they generally have a Scrafty in the back and uh, that Nido Queen double dark team with uh, Nido Queen on the lead, Scrafty in the back. Uh, this is not a whole lot of places for Reggie to go. So playing that out, getting off the damage and maybe grabbing a shield uh, is, is the best way to play the Nido Queen lead. Because again, nine times out of ten, it's going to have uh, at, at the very least a Scrafty in the back and uh, some other dark type, generally Sableye. Um, but everything else is pretty straightforward. Of course, uh, all of the counter users, you're getting out of there as soon as you can. If it's a dark type like Scrafty or Obstagoon, um, you could play around a little bit, threaten uh, with the Focus Blast. You will definitely grab a shield advantage for sure. Um, but Obstagoon, I will say, is a little bit different than Scrafty because you don't, you're not going to want to come in there with Sableye. Um, so... Something like an Obstagoon, uh, you can actually stay in there. You do win in the two shield, uh, so it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, you can play that out. You may need to bait with a Zap Cannon. They will absolutely shield up your moves because they are they do get one shot by the Focus Blast. So um, Obstagoon, unlike Scrafty, is a little bit different. Sableye has a lot more play up against uh, Scrafty. Um, and I think that's about it. Like I said, everything else is pretty straightforward with this team. Reggie Steele's amazing on the lead. Even with the nerf, it's not that bad of a nerf. It, Reggie Steele is still good. Um, so yeah, that is team number one. Reggie Steele on the lead. Sableye on the safe swap. Altaria in the back. And guys, one more look at this impressive scorecard. That does not lie. This team is amazing. So with all that said, that is team number one. Let's have a look at team number two. All right, my friends, here we go. Team number two. And I will tell you, it's every bit as powerful as team number one. I really struggled as to which one would be one or two. You can call it 1A and 1B, if you will. I, that's that's certainly uh, what it comes down to. Team number two is insanely powerful. One of my favorite teams to run in the Great League, and it leads with Metacham. On the lead, Licky Tongue is your safe swap, and G Fisk, Galarian Stunfisk, in the back to bring it home for you. Powerful team. This was actually my number one best team for Metacham and my top five best teams for Metacham video. And uh, I, I, it's amazing, guys. It, it is so powerful. It will help you climb if that is your goal this season, to climb the ranks in the Great League. This team is an excellent team to climb with. And let's have a look at this scorecard here. And I was not kidding, guys. Look at that scorecard. Holy smokes. You get an A for coverage, a B for bulk, a B, an A for safety, excuse me, and a B for consistency. I am not kidding. This team is amazing. Uh, so let's have a look at these matchups here. Metacham on the lead, always powerful. One of the most common leads that you will see in the Great League. Uh, and for that reason, uh, you're, it's going to be tricky um, because you're going to be running into a lot of mirror matchups on the lead. Um... You just kind of have to play that out. The way I would play it is look to land the big psychic. Um, you're not going to want to stay in there for too long because uh, you never know what Medicham may have in the back. Um, and Licky Tongue can, can put in work on it as well. It really depends on what you're seeing a lot of uh, as of late in the Great League. Uh, Metacham could have uh, Double Steel in the back, could have an Alola Ninetales and a Licky Tongue of their own in the back. Um, so you never know. You never know if you need to hang on to your Metacham. So you don't want to have it get too low on health. Um, so you can play around with the Metacham leads a little bit. Just know that Licky Tongue can definitely hold its own, especially if you can get a health advantage for it. Um... Let's see here. Swampert, uh, you're going to want to stay in there. You don't want that Swampert anywhere near your Stunfisk. Licky, Licky Tongue can uh, do well up against Swampert as well if things do go awry. But Medicham has a very clean victory over Swampert 
in uh, the one and two shield scenario. No problemo for Medicham. Uh, so take out that Swampert if you can on the lead with Medi. Um, what else? Altaria. So uh, Altaria. Medi this uh, Medicham is so powerful that even the flyers have to, you know, really be concerned about Medicham. This is why I recommend Ice Punch. Ice Punch, Psychic, that is the best move set for Medicham, hands down. And it's for the Flyers. Um, also, to an extent, uh, the powerful grass types like Trevenant and Venusaur. Um, it's a lower energy cost move than Psychic. But um, Altaria, back to the matter at hand. Uh, the way that you, I tackle that lead is I like to chip with the Ice Punch. They it's 50 50 on whether they will tank it or not. Uh, but the goal is to chunk some health or grab a shield advantage. Um, that's the key, uh, there because most Altaria leads will absolutely have a steel type in the back. The most common Altaria team these days has Reggie Steel along with uh, Toxic Uh, so you want to draw out uh, one of those, pr uh, preferably the Toxic with your Licky Tongue after you have either grabbed a shield or chipped some health on it. Uh, so that's how I play Altaria on the lead. Uh, let's see here. What else? Nita Queen, yes. I wanted to highlight Nita Queen as well. Uh, chip with an Ice Punch. Um, if it's a Shadow, they may shield. Again, kind of like Altaria, it's 50-50. Ice Punch does a lot of damage on both of those Pokemon. Um, but again, the goal with a Pokemon like Nidoqueen is to grab either a Shield Advantage or a Health Advantage. Uh, and then you're going to pivot into Licky Tongue. Uh, but everything else, pretty straightforward. Uh, dark types, normal types, you're staying in. Steel types, you're staying in for sure. If it's a Reggie Steel uh, and you're running the uh, the recommended Ice Punch Psychic moveset, just know that uh, yes, you are going to stay in there, and you will have to give them a shield advantage. Um, but you can definitely take it out, um, and you will be looking good from then on out. They usually will uh, have definitely a Sableye. Reggie Steel often comes paired with two Ghost types in the back in the form of Trevenant or uh, Sableye. You're going to do well there having Licky Tongue on your team. Um, so that's about it for team number two. Pretty straightforward team. I cannot get over that scorecard. That is an insane scorecard. Um, so that is team number two. Metacham on the lead. Licky Tongue on the safe swap. And G-Fisk in the back to close the game strong. So with all that said, that is team number two. Let's have a look at team number three. All right, guys, here we go. Team number three. And no top five teams list would be complete without the classic timeless Bastion on Metacham Core. It is still uh, every bit as powerful in season 12, guys. Um, and here we are. Basti lead, Trevenant on the safe swap, and Metacham in the back. So both of our back two Pokemon weak to Flyers. Bastiodon is arguably the best answer to any flyer in this meta. Um, so, uh, solid core with a solid safe swap in Trevenant. Uh, let's have a look at this scorecard here. And there we have it, guys. I wasn't kidding. Basti, Medi, core still uh, going strong in Season 12 of Go Battle League. You'd love to see it. You get an A for coverage, A for bulk, B for safety, and a B for consistency. Very solid scorecard here. So, Basti on the lead. Um, Basti often gets a bad rap because it's quite inflexible. Um, it's it's extremely good at what its uh, what it what its job is, and that is handle flyers, handle charmers. But uh, it's pretty. It can be pretty inflexible at times, which is why we have these two very dynamic Pokemon in the back. Um, and uh, another reason why this team is a very solid team is because it's very beginner friendly, and uh, those of us who are very well seasoned by now um, can figure out this team uh, with ease. It's a very simplistic team, yet wildly effective. Um, so again, yeah, it's pretty simple because uh, Basti on the lead, you're getting out of there on the counter users, getting out of there on the steel types, the opposing steel types, with the exception of Skarmory, of course. 
but uh, Stunfisk, Reggie Steele, you're getting out of there. And to Trevenant, Trevenant is the dedicated safe swap for this team. Trevenant's here to draw out any fight, uh, flyers or charmers that may be lurking in the back on your opponent's team. One very tricky uh, lead is always going to be that Nido Queen lead. Um, it's it's generally Nido Queen double dark. You could see you could see Wall Rain in the back as well uh, with Nido Queen. Uh, so you, you, you're getting out of there because, uh, that is a nightmare lead for Bastiodon and you'll want to go into Trevenant. It's not, it's, it takes a team effort. Those Nido Queen double dark teams is uh, very, very difficult for this team. Um, but if you can grab a shield advantage, so you're going to swap in the Trevenant, they're going to swap out. They will undoubtedly swap out because they will most likely want to keep that Nita Queen on the Basti because it is such a dominant matchup. They will generally meet you with a Sableye. If you can grab a shield advantage with the threat of the big Shadow Ball, or if they let it go and they get a little overconfident, uh, you could even flip that matchup. Uh, so that is the key with the Nita Queen team. Uh, you want to set Medi up with a shield advantage because... If you can do that with that uh, mid-game matchup, generally it'll be a Sableye on your Trevenant. Uh, Medi can do very well up against uh, Nido Queen, and there is nine times out of ten going to be a Scrafty in the back as the second Dark type. Uh, so that is the most effective way to play that team. Either way, it's going to be it's going to be a tricky team. It always has been, always will be. But if you can grab a Shield advantage, that's the key in that mid-game matchup. Uh, Medicham will be that much better to sweep the rest of the team. Um, Swampert, the Swampert Skarmory core is also very rough for this team for obvious reasons. Um, you're, you got to get out of just like with Nita Queen, you have to get out of there immediately into Trevenant. You could even, uh, I don't often recommend safe swapping Medicham. Um, but you will likely draw out the Skarmory or the Sableye. Uh, either way, you'll want to get get a nice healthy farm with Basti uh, because uh, Swampert, although it is resisting Stone Edge, it does it does a surprisingly amount of damage. A surprising, excuse me, a surprising amount of damage to it. Any damage that you can get off on Swampert just makes it a lot easier moving forward. Um, but other than that, pretty straightforward team, very powerful team. A lot of you are already very, very, uh, very much familiar with, uh, how to run it. It's been around for quite some time. And again, it is quite powerful, uh, even in season 12. And that is Bastion on, on the lead, Trevenant on the safe swap and Medicham in the back to bring it home with you, preferably with a shield advantage. So, uh, with all that said, that is team number three. Let's have a look at team number four. All right, here we go. Team number four. Another very solid team to get you off to a good start in season 12 of Go Battle League. And it leads with Altaria on the lead, Linky Tongue on the safe swap, and Runa Regis in the back to bring it home for you. Uh, Altaria. Quite powerful. Uh, so, a good rule of thumb with team building, my friends, is if a Pokemon serves as a solid closer, which Altaria does, it will often serve as a very solid lead. Um, so, let's have a look at the scorecard here. And there we have it. Not bad. Very, very strong scorecard for team number four. You get a B for coverage, an A for bulk. An A for safety and a B for consistency. Not bad at all. Very strong scorecard for team number four. So, as I mentioned, Altaria. Uh, uh, these matchups here speaks volumes, guys. As I was mentioning, Altaria is quite the lead option to run in this current meta in the Great League. So many people are leading with Swampert's, Trevenant's. Uh, Lantern, with its new update, is a, is a very popular lead as well. Altaria does amazing on the lead. Of course, you just want to keep it away from those steel types like Reggie Steel and Stunfisk. So if you are met with a steel type, you're going to be going into Licky Tongue, and you've got Runarigus in the back to uh, handle the steel types as well. Um, but other than that, pretty straightforward. Altaria wins a lot on the lead, as we can see here. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, the goal of this team is to set up Runarigas to sweep the end game, guys. It has excellent baiting potential with Sand Tomb, with Stab. Any uh, low energy cost move that can also debuff your opponent is an amazing, amazing bait, uh, bait move. And of course, you have that nuke potu- uh, excuse me, nuke potential also with stab in the form of shadow ball. There isn't a whole lot that can run from the shadow ball damage. Um, so yeah, very powerful team for team number four. Definitely one I will uh, run on the channel just to show you guys uh, how effective it can be. Um, so uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully, you can draw out a charmer with Licky Tongue as it does have very narrow losses to all of the charmers. And if that is the case, uh, you can come in uh, with Runarigas and uh, try your very best to take out that charmer. And hopefully, Altaria sweeps whatever's left in the back. So that is team number four uh, Altaria on the lead, Licky Tongue on the safe swap, and Runarigas in the back to close the game strong. So, with all that said, that is team number four. Let's dive into team number five. All right, guys, last but certainly not least, we've got team number five, and it leads with Stunfisk on the lead. Trevenant is your safe swap, and Azumarill in the back to close the game strong. This team has been around for a few seasons by now, ever since, I believe, since uh, Trevenant came on the scene, and uh, it is still quite powerful. Very solid team that you can easily get the hang of and uh, get some momentum in the Great League. Uh, so the dynamics of this team are pretty straightforward. Stunfisk on the lead is going to be weak to fighters. And our two Pokemon in the back have a tendency to handle fighters pretty well. So very solid team here. Relatively balanced team as well. Let's have a look at this scorecard. And not bad, pretty decent scorecard for team number five. You get a B for coverage, an A for bulk, which is saying a lot, guys, because uh, I spend a lot of time team building, and it is quite hard to get a decent bulk score with any team that has Trevenant on it. So uh, the fact that it gets an A says a lot. Uh, you get a B for safety and a B for consistency. Very solid scorecard for team number five. Let's have a look at these matchups here. Like I said, uh, team number five is pretty straightforward. It sort of functions like an ABB style team, but also as more of a balanced team, providing you a lot of flexibility to have some very nice success in the Great League. Stunfisk, very powerful on the lead. Handles Charmers beautifully, handles the Poison types to perfection, and of course handles the Flyers like you wouldn't believe. Uh, so, uh, the goal of this team is uh, Trevenant's going to be the safe swap. You want to draw out any potential Poison types that may be lurking in the back. Setting up a zoom roll with Hydro Pump to close the game strong. I featured this team uh, last season, uh, and I showed you guys the power of a zoom roll with Hydro Pump uh, as your closer. Um, if you need a refresher, definitely hop on the channel, check it out. Um, but yeah, this team, very straightforward, very easy to understand and grasp. Uh, any flyers and charmers, you're staying in there on the lead. Uh, any counter users, you're making the play in the Trevenant immediately. Now, Reggie Steel, you can play around with Reggie Steel a little bit with Stunfisk. You do very comfortably, well, not very, but you definitely comfortably, uh, I keep saying comfortably, not comfortably. You do tank a Focus Blast, excuse me, for Reggie Steel. It does get you in the red, but it's very awkward for the Reggie Steel because they cannot farm down. Uh, they will have to throw another move, as annoying as that may be. Throwing a big, high energy cost move on a low health Pokemon, that is the power of Stunfisk. You also have an excellent answer in the form of Trevenant, which absolutely shuts down Registeel. Uh, so Registeel is pretty easy to handle with this team. And uh, Azumarill does have some decent play, depending on shielding scenario, so long as you are running the, ver the recommended Hydro Pump. Uh, if you're going to run Azumarill as a closer, you'll definitely want Hydro Pump on it. Uh, that that can uh, make or break a game for you in the end games. 
Um, but other than that, pretty straightforward. Licky Tongue lead is a little tricky. You do win that in the one shield. Uh, two shield, you can do well uh, as well. So Licky Tongue leads, you stay in there uh, with G Fisk, of course. Um, and that's about it. Uh, Swampert, you've got two answers to Swampert in the back on your team. Um, and yeah, pretty straightforward for team number five, guys. Uh, pretty solid scorecard as well. So that is team number five. G Fisk on the lead, Travenant on the safe swap, and Azumarill in the back with Hydro Pump to close the game strong. So that about wraps it up, my friends, for my top five best teams for the Great League Season 12 Edition. Uh, this season should be a lot of fun. They've shaken things up quite a bit with the new updates. We finally got move updates, uh, giving a lot more Pokemon uh, more relevance. So um, very fun. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun this season. And uh, these are five very powerful teams that you, that can set you up for the most success in Season 12. So, guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.